Hey, what's up guys? Today we are finally taking apart the 5.3 to see what's wrong with it. It's been sitting for how long, would you say? A year. Yeah, a year. The last video, uh, I said this was out of a cat eye. I was mistaken. It's from a 1999 to maybe a 2000 truck, so I apologize for that mistake. But before I get started, let's take a look at this merch. So I finally got a, you know, merch website. <laughs> and my dad is, uh, you know, he's, he's repping the shirt. Yeah. Uh, so I'll put that in the uh, comment section and in the description if you want to go check it out. But hopefully what we plan on doing is just taking everything apart on this engine in this video. Hopefully maybe the heads. I don't see why not. Just to see if there's any damage, any pitting in the walls. So here we go. Take manifold off. I mean, there's really nothing much to look at now, so still gotta take off the front accessory drive and the AC compressor, the manifolds, and be able to take off the heads and see what's up. If that alternator is still good. It might be. I need to figure out how to convert these to a one wire because actually the only thing I'm going to run on that is going to be an alternator. Only an alternator? Only an alternator. No power Shoot. steering, no AC. Are you still going to do the regular water pump or are you going to do an electric water pump? That I don't know. Um, some of that's going to depend on what what I can find as far as drive brackets for, you know, like the alternator and all that. Yeah. Because so now with these motors, when you take off, you just put an electric water pump and then take off the AC and all that. On the engine dyno, they're pushing 350. Yeah, about 350. So when they test them at the factory, they're testing with air conditioning on, all your accessories on. So you get your your SAE horsepower rating. So yeah, these motors stock form, if you strip them down to nothing, yeah, they make 350 horsepower. But with all the accessories on, it just goes to show you how much it takes to actually drive all your accessories. All right, so we just got the front accessory drive off. All that's left is a harmonic balancer. We took off the exhaust manifolds, the engine mounts, and, um, yeah, so I guess the next thing is to take off the valley cover and then to take off the valve covers and then take off the heads and see what it looks like. And then we could go turn the engine over. After that, we'll take off the oil pan and assess it from there.
So obviously we just got the heads off. And uh, it's looking a little worse than what we thought it would. I guess he was running just straight water for the cooling and, uh, or for the coolant. And as you can see in the water passages, it's not looking pretty. So we're definitely gonna have to clean that out. The cylinder walls don't look horrible. We did have a 6.0 that we got before this engine and uh, that motor was just completely trashed. There was pits and the cylinder walls completely rusted. Did it spin a bearing or two? Oh, yeah. Spun bearings, you name it. Yeah, so. It was as far as this motor compared to the other one, it's looking a lot better. But obviously there's still a lot of work and there is some rust on the camshaft. So, I mean, we do plan on switching out the cam anyways, but I definitely have to get new lifters, cam, uh, hopefully all the bearings and stuff look good as well, but we'll just have to find out. See all that? Surface rust. Definitely need to get it sonic checked. Oh yeah. Because uh, if I'm going to have to bore it, to get it cleaned up, I might as well bore it as big as I possibly can. I have heard of people boring them out to 6.0 specs, um, which would be badass. I may just do the 5.7, you know, make an iron LS1 now after seeing that. Because there's some other spots that just kind of a little bit concerned with. I mean, a home might take it out, but I, you know, these water jackets are ugly as shit. Yeah. So, what would you use to clean out any of that? Because I was uh, the absolute <laughs> best thing to do is strip the block completely bare and take it to the machine shop and have them dunk it. In like an acid bath or something? Yeah, they got like caustic baths and shit like that. Big old steam cleaners that they can put them in. See, that's probably fucking, gonna be that's fucking RTV right there. That was stuck up in here. So, yeah, it's not gonna be as straightforward as we thought now, but I still think it's a good block to uh, start with. Oh, for sure. I mean, as long as the, the bearings and stuff are still okay, which hopefully, I mean, we haven't taken a look at that, but as long as they're okay, yeah, they're, um, shouldn't be too much of an issue. No. Shouldn't. It's no. time for a moment of truth. Well, all you're going to see is the windage oh, tray. That is true. I forgot about that. Oh my god, dude. Look at the sludge in there. <laughs> nice. That is nasty. How's that O-ring looking? I don't know pretty old yeah so a little fun fact if you have a, a truck with the LS or honestly probably any LS and you start to hear lifter tick it is probably the o-ring off of the oil pickup tube for the very possible yeah my dad's truck had the same issue to where it sounded like a sewing machine going down the road he went on a forum saw that was the issue tried it works. one of them one, of the, one of the issues, I guess, but yeah, I would say that's probably one of the major ones. But and now it gets good oil pressure, and oh yeah, it's been fine. Yeah, because like Chuck has the same problem on his truck. They had already replaced all that, and yeah. it's still making that noise. But the other thing that can possibly cause it is there's a little piece in there that they call the wishbone or the dog bone. And what that is, it's actually in the back of the block goes in there and it's an oil bypass if the o-rings on that crack or break it can cause excess oil to go by and you'll lose oil pressure to your cam and lifters and the crank looks a little dry yeah but i mean it's not horrible oh and you're spilling a lot of oil over here i can't put this over oh well it doesn't look horrible it's rebuildable I think it just needs a lot of TLC and she should be good on a lot of TLC. The main thing I'm worried about is going to be the cylinder walls just because of those couple of how they look. 
I mean, other than hurting the wallet, there's uh, no downside of boring out the cylinders. The good thing about these motors is that there's so many parts that interchange between, you know, the 4.8s, the 5.3s, the 6.0s, you know. It's the good thing about them. You know, because primarily, you know, the main difference between a 5.3, 5.7, and 6.0 is your bore size. Stroke is identical. And then the only difference between the 4.8 and 5.3 is your stroke. My original thoughts were if I could get my hands on some 4.8 pistons, that way I could have some flat tops, bump the compression ratio up, you know, um, put a bigger cam. If I change out the pistons, change out the rods to like the, <clears throat> was it 04? I mean, yeah, I think it's 04, 05, 06. They had better rods. They're a little bit stronger, you know. Then it would it would make a really good strap, you know, stout little motor. And I could do that all with factory parts, do it on the cheap, yeah. you know. Yeah, honestly, I don't see this spending too much money on this. Well. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to obviously yeah. clean up the motor. Machine the machine yeah. shops are can get very expensive. But I was just really hoping that the... Uh, I mean, the bottom side don't look bad. Mm -hmm. it looks pretty good. Um, it's the cylinder walls that, that, you know, I'm a little bit sketched about. So that's going to conclude the video. Make sure you all stay tuned because next week we are going to be pulling out the camshaft, taking a look at the lifters, and go in depth on the heads to see, you know, what kind of shape it's in. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next video.